Hello everyone, welcome to another Stukin Expert Session. My name is Trevor Erickson and I'm pleased to introduce our expert speaker today, Nathan Tanner. He's currently a senior HR product generalist at LinkedIn and a best-selling career strategy author with his latest book being titled Not Your Parents' Workplace, Critical Lessons for Interns and Young Professionals. Today, Nathan will be sharing his knowledge and experience on how to launch your digital marketing career in today's workplace. Without any further ado, let's turn it over to Nathan. Thanks for the intro. To kick things off, I want to tell you a quick interview story. When I was in college, I applied for a lot of internships, and after many rejections, I finally got an interview at one, Fidelity Investments. I remember putting on my suit and tie and driving to the office. There I met with two financial advisors, and a few minutes into the interview, one of them asked, can you tell us about a time when you showed initiative? My mind went completely blank, and I couldn't think of anything to say, and I sat there awkwardly for a while. The only story that came to mind was about a girl who was in one of my classes I thought was beautiful. I wanted to ask her out, but I was nervous, and eventually I worked up the courage, showed initiative, and asked her out. And I, I knew this was a dumb story. I, I shared it anyway, and when I finished, I knew my hopes of landing that internship were also finished. The interviewers were polite, but I could tell they were wondering who decided to interview this weirdo and who shares dating experiences in an interview. Well, to no surprise, I didn't get the job. Uh, I did end up marrying the girl, but that is a story for another day. So why do you think I tell this story? Today we're talking about career development skills. Networking is a skill. Interviewing is a skill. Finding a job is a skill. These are all skills. And regardless of where you're at today, you can improve these skills through consistent, diligent practice. Quick intro on me. Um, my first job out of college was at a company called Lehman Brothers. Um, I joined in 2008, just months before they went bankrupt. Not only was it the largest bankruptcy in history, uh, but it essentially started the financial crisis and prepared, uh, propelled the U.S. into a recession. And I worked in various finance positions for several years before making the decision to pursue an MBA at BYU. And after a lot of self-examination, I felt that a career in HR would be a good fit and I was thrilled to get an internship at LinkedIn. This led to a full-time job, uh, which is where I'm at today, and during my final year of the MBA program, I published Not Your Parents' Workplace, which is a career strategy book for college students and young professionals. And much of the material we're going to discuss comes from my book. I've been able to mentor and teach hundreds of students and I know the lessons I'm about to share will help you successfully launch your career. And as a marketing student, now is the time for you to start building your brand. It's not enough to just have a resume. Having a professional presence online is critical. And LinkedIn is the professional profile of record. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile, it's time to create one. Go do it today. As you build your LinkedIn profile, make sure the picture you use is professional. As for the content of your profile, a good place to start is to take your resume and paste that data into the relevant sections of your profile. This creates a foundation, and in time you can further build out each section of your profile. Here are two great resources that can help. The first on the left is the LinkedIn profile checklist. And the second is the LinkedIn Ultimate Cheat Sheet. You can find both with a simple Google search. A few stats. Did you know that profiles with a picture will result in 14 times more profile views? And those who list skills on their profile receive 13 times more views? Most importantly, if you have a fully complete and optimized LinkedIn profile, you are 40 times more likely to receive job opportunities via LinkedIn. Needless to say, 
taking time to craft a complete, relevant profile is well worth your time. I love this quote here from Steve Jobs. Good artists copy, great artists steal. Interestingly, I think Jobs actually stole this quote from Pablo Picasso, uh, but the application of this quote, at least with regards to LinkedIn profiles, is that you should leverage the work of those who have gone before you. Identify digital marketers who you respect. Find classmates that recently graduated. Is there anything you can steal from these pro profiles? Now, of course, you can't copy sentences word for word, but you can certainly adapt their work for your own purpose. It's a, it's a great way to start uh, building your profile. Always remember that you own your job search. There's likely a list of companies that recruit for marketing positions at your school. This is a great place to start, but don't limit yourself. Here's a quick exercise that might help you with your search. Set aside 30 minutes of uninterrupted time. Completely block it off on your calendar. Then make a list of every company you'd like to work at. Once again, don't limit yourself to only companies that recruit on campus. Next, of those companies, identify five of them on your list that you would love to work at. For each of these companies, make a list of every person you know at the company. Speaking with friends and family is a great place to start. So is your alumni database. Look for ways to be resourceful. If you don't know anyone at the company, try LinkedIn. If you pull up the company's page on LinkedIn, you can see who in your network works there. Those are your first degree connections. And equally important, you can see which one of your connections knows someone who works there. Those are your second degree connections. And your connections can actually make introductions to these people. But what if you have no clue what companies you want to work at? In this case, the LinkedIn alumni tool is especially valuable. And I'll do a quick demo. So once you're logged into LinkedIn, up in the top left corner, hover over My Network and select Find Alumni. This will take you to the alumni tool. From here, you can see I went to Brigham Young University, but your respective university will show up at the top. And then in these fields here, in the middle of the page, you can see there are different criteria you can, uh, you can screen for. In this example, I've identified individuals who work in the Phoenix, Arizona area. It's important if there's a specific location. I've identified individuals who studied marketing and individuals who have the skill of social media marketing. And then at the bottom, there'll be a list of all those individuals uh, from your university. So let's say I want to click on this individual right here at the bottom. His name is Scott Cowley. I can see a quick glimpse of his profile here. Um, I can connect with him directly, but since I don't actually know him, what I want to do is find individuals who know him who can make an introduction. At the bottom of the screen, there are 18 uh, of my first degree connections, people I know, who also know Scott. And these individuals can be really, really helpful in making introductions. So that's a great, uh, a great way to use the LinkedIn alumni tool. Strongly encourage you to, to check that out. Now let's talk networking. Too often networking gets a bad rap. When people hear the word networking, too many of us picture a guy like this. Networking is not about just shaking hands and passing out as many business cards as possible. No, effective networking is simply the practice of building genuine relationships. Why is networking so important? Well, 70% of jobs are now found through networking. I've literally applied for close to 1,000 jobs, and I've never found a job from simply applying. If your strategy is, oh, I'm just going to apply for a bunch of positions and see what happens, you'll likely end up with an average job or no job at all. Be proactive and don't sell yourself short. 
I found that targeted networking works much better than just attending networking events. While networking events can be helpful, time is a limited resource. You want to develop relationships with those who can best help you. Additionally, I found that professionals are much more responsive and helpful when you approach them with specific, relevant questions. The informational interview is the most underrated tool for building key relationships. If there's one thing you take away from today's session, this is it. An informational interview is simply a meeting between you, the job seeker, and a professional. The best advice on informational interviews comes from a very surprising source, Pitbull. The goal of the info interview is not to get a job, but to ask for their advice. You want to learn about their career, the industry they work in, and specifics about the company they work for. By seeking advice, you avoid putting pressure on the relationship. The majority of people love sharing advice as long as they're approached in the right way. Build a genuine relationship now and the job or money will come with time. A successful informational interview includes the following five steps. In your initial email with the professional, provide a one sentence summary of yourself, share why you want to speak, and request a few minutes of their time to ask questions about their company and work experience. Make it clear you're just asking for advice and thank them in advance for any time they can share. They're likely to be very busy, so be flexible with your schedule. Once you've scheduled the interview, it's time to prepare. Spend time learning about the professional and the company. When researching the company, it's helpful to know what products and services the company offers information about the CEO, as well as basic information about the function, marketing, in which you'd like to work. You don't need to memorize details of the company's financial statements, but a little research will genuinely convey interest and improve the quality of your conversation. Don't forget to do some quick research on the individual. LinkedIn profiles can tell you a lot. Don't ask questions you can easily answer by glancing at their profile. A rule of thumb is that if something is listed on a LinkedIn profile, it's fair game to bring up in a professional way. When starting the info interview, here's a general outline that might help. Start by thanking them for their time. Remind them that you plan to chat for 15 minutes or whatever time you said in the email and ask if that's still okay. Consider asking, before I ask a few questions, would it be helpful if I shared a little bit about myself? they'll likely say yes. This is your opportunity to provide a brief summary of your background. Share a little bit about yourself, um, allowing this allows the professionals to get to know you better and tailor the responses to your situation. Remember, you're the one driving the conversation. It's your responsibility to make sure that it's engaging. It's critical to ask good questions. Consider asking about their background, why they joined their current company, what a typical day looks like, and advice they have for someone starting a career in marketing. The better questions you ask, the better the conversation, and the more they'll be able to help you. When the allotted time has passed, thank them for their time and wrap things up. Don't forget to follow up. Sending a handwritten note, emailing, uh, gratitude is a, is a great way to do that. If they eventually help you find a job or made an intro to someone else, keep them updated. If you had a great conversation and want to stay in touch, send an invitation to connect on LinkedIn and make sure that you personalize the invitation. Professionals are far, far more likely to accept your invitation to connect if you include a personalized note. Remember that your goal isn't to make a contact. You are building a relationship. After talking to people at your dream companies, you may learn that you don't have enough experience. Some companies, unfortunately, won't give you experience unless you already have experience. This can be incredibly frustrating. Thankfully, there are several ways to gain that needed experience. 
Internships are a great way to go if you can find one. Ask yourself, are there any course projects that are relevant? Is there a marketing related case competition you can enter? Is there a professor that needs help on a project? Is there a local startup that needs help with their marketing? If you can't find paid work, consider working for free. While this may not be ideal, unpaid work can be a great entry point for your career. Do high quality work and this will lead to paid opportunities. Your LinkedIn profile should be so much more than an online resume. You can add videos, slide decks, articles, and other types of media on your profile. Showcase your work and start building your brand. Uh, here's a profile I love here. You can see under the education section, there's a press release for a club where this individual was a president, as well as a project that, uh, that he worked on. Um, this next profile, uh, great bullet points highlighting education and extracurricular activities, as well as a research project uh, here all the way to the that uh, he wrote and it was relevant to the career and the direction he wanted um, to, to go in. It's important to develop your competitive advantage. The framework I'm about to share comes from Reid Hoffman's book, The Startup of You, and I expound on this further in my book. If you want to compete in a global workforce, you must act as the CEO of your career and take control of your professional future. You can develop a professional competitive advantage by answering questions regarding your assets, your aspirations, and the market realities. Your assets are what you are inherently good at. What do you have going for you? These can include soft assets, such as knowledge, skills, and connections, as well as hard assets, such as cash and investments. For your aspirations, think about where you want to go in the future. What do you want to do? Who do you want to become? And lastly, market realities. What will people actually pay you for and where is there a market demand? Ask yourself where you fall in this diam uh, where you fall in this Venn diagram. Some people can answer these questions easily. For others, it may take years. I want to close with a quote I believe is relevant to today's workplace. It is not the strongest or the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is most adaptable to change. You have a long career ahead of you, so take time to invest in yourself. Become a lifelong learner. Continually look for ways to improve. And always remember that you are in charge of your career development. All right, thanks Nathan for that awesome expert session. We're going to link up all of the important resources and notes that Nathan spoke about in this expert session. And just a quick reminder to go out and follow Nathan online. You can do so from his website at nathantanner.net and you can also follow him on Twitter at nhtanner. And don't forget, on Amazon you can find his, his uh, latest book, Not Your Parents' Workplace. Once again, Nathan, appreciate your time today. And uh, good luck to everyone in their future careers.